This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Young Torless from 1966, directed by Volker Schlondorf. The <clears throat> synopsis for this film, RJ. Yeah. At an Austrian boys' boarding school in the early 1900s, shy, intelligent Torless observes the sadistic behavior mm-hmm. of his fellow students doing nothing to help a victimized classmate until the torture goes too far. Um, could you could you explain again um, how old is Torless? Or what state is he in? <laughs> He's in the state of Austria. Oh, okay. But, uh, like, I mean, like, chronologically, like, where does he fit in in, in the world of Torlesses? Oh, young and he's not oh he's young yeah he's not lil he's not baby he's not lil he's yeah, yeah. um he's young young in he's, spirit he's, or he's not big not big torless no what about now consider this and tell me if you've heard this one before what about mature torless mm, he's definitely not there yet do you remember those video game commercials where they're like rated m for mature and uh yeah as a kid i was like what does mature mean and then it's like mature or like manure <laughs> or like manure adapted from Robert, yep. Robert Muscle's acclaimed novel, young Taurus launched the new German cinema movement and garnered the 1966 Cannes film festival international critics prize for first time director Volker Schlondorf. Would you, did you say first time? First time, long time. Wait, did you actually say first time? Yeah. Is this is Schlondorf's first film? Uh, uh, according to Khan. Khan Film Festival? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I did not know, I but I, I do now. I don't even know if I knew that. Nope, I didn't even mark it first feature. Wow, you're really bad at this. <laughs> I'm I'm the worst. Be better. Is what I would say. I'm just going to do a little... Yeah, I guess it is his first... I mean, when they're right, they're right. He got close there. He directed... Uh, uh, the Mediterranean is a supernal arena. from like That's 44 minutes long. That doesn't count. Mediterranean soup, did you just say? Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I imagine there's a lot of clams in there or something like that. Clam chowder? <laughs> Yeah, something like that. I don't know. What's in the Mediterranean? Squid? Uh, olives. Oh, right. Olive soup. Love it. Love it. <laughs> so tell me more about uh, Young Torless. Well, Young Torless, uh, as mentioned uh, in that synopsis, is based on a, a book, a kind of a semi-autobiographical book called The Confusions of Young Torless. Okay. Uh, What's he confused about? Um about his place in the or how how the world functions and how people can be i guess okay um so i we we've talked about schlondorf before this is what the, sure. the, the this is the this is the fourth film of his if not fifth no or is it four i don't know i never checked i just okay. seems like a lot so fourth four it's uh Sure. It's more than others. It's more than three for sure. More than three. I can tell you that. Actually, let's confirm this. Yeah, no, it's it's four. And I've also seen his Death of a Salesman movie with uh, Dustin Hoffman and John Malkovich. From Schwandorf? Yep. Mm, I don't want to watch that. That doesn't sound good. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. So going into this. I read this synopsis and it was kind of like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> it sounds, I, 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 you know, and you also, you look at the, seems like your bag. Seems like my bag. I noticed on the poster, it's got this guy and he's kind of necking with Barbara Steele. Uh, which Barbara Steele? <laughs> the actress who you might oh. remember from Mario Bava movies. I know Mario Batali movies. Yeah. You kind of remind me of Mario Batali a little bit. Do you, how, you about, uh, how about Bozina? I know Batista. Well, Bozina is that... the name of the character that uh, Barbara Steele plays. 
Oh, yeah, I know, I know. In her. in this motion picture. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm actually yeah, like I did. I was kind of like it never really clicked for me, but I was like, who the hell is that lady? I know who that is. No, oh, I mean she was an eight, eight and a half as well. I know her from the hit Canadian film Shivers, or They Come From Within. That's uh, mm-hmm. that's that's where I know her most yep. from. But uh, that too. I never looked at it when I was watching this. I was like, she's familiar, but I was too lazy to actually check. She's and, the lady uh, with the the eyes and the eyebrows. In uh, Shivers. Well, it's Barbara Steele. Just in general, she, like she, in Black she, Steel. She has a pretty distinct look as as, as, a, as, as a human being. Yeah, that's her on the cover of Black Sunday, right? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, I'm caught up. Continue. You got her. So, yeah. uh, movie opens up with old uh, T- Tommy Torless. He's, he's going off to, like, boarding school, this... Um, private school military school kind of place mm-hmm. his parents see him off he hops on the train there's kind of like a weird shot too where like the mother is looking at the camera longingly and then but the but the train is moving behind her so she couldn't be really looking at her son i don't know if you noticed that it's uh i think i did actually but i don't think it kind of because I was watching it, and I think there there was an alarm was brought up. I was like, something's off here, but I don't really I don't know what it is. So I, I don't think I figured that out. But I did realize it's like I was like, wait a minute, does that make sense? But it didn't. I'm not sure right? if she's like turning away from her son and looking at us, and we see how mm-hmm. sad she is that he's leaving. And then the train leaves. It arrives at its destination. Let's all. And that, that's the other thing of uh, these uh the schlondorf movies is uh trains are uh popping up a little bit because in the I th- if i'm right in coup de gras coup de gras that one yeah coup de grace coup de gras that's like the end of the movie is on at the train station correct yeah yes and uh that's a good ending as well yeah so there's trains in there yeah there's and then, but then I'm also thinking Tim about Tim Drum has trains too. Closely watched trains, which is not a Schlondorf movie, no. but is a movie that is very came out the same year. Uh, has trains yeah. coming of age. Well, maybe there, but, maybe but, something's but, going on but, in England or well, you're in Europe. <laughs> something's going on in Germany that we don't know about. Yeah, yeah. Well, and this is, I mean, whatever uh, Aust- Austria, Hungary, uh, I think. It, yeah, it takes place. Czechoslovakia. Yeah, I I don't know my uh, the, the the exact way that what piece of land where and people are, right? But I, I think I think it yeah, which is so check check and then uh, closely watched trains is also check. So there's concerns. There there these these were things of concerns depicting the youth of mm-hmm. uh, the nation in the this window of time. And I guess there's always this connection, I think, now, maybe more than ever, of trains and fascism. Because mm. there's often people, it's like trains Perfect. are a means to a dark, dark end in, in the movement of people. Are trains inherently fascist, do you think? Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if I've seen a lot of people discuss that online but i definitely have seen people talk about whether or not superhero movies or superheroes in in essence are fascists are fascists this this apparently gets people really mad when you say yes they are and they go no (laughs) they're they fight fascists and you're like i mean no no." (laughs) i mean i don't care too much for that or like i i have no i have no horse in that race but uh, I would like someone to get to the bottom of this train situation and see what they actually think. What's the what's the deal with all these trains? I don't know. Have you covered any planes or automobiles at the moment yet? I have not. Okay. Yeah. But well. But yeah. Tin drum and uh, somewhat ends with a train as well. It's like in the last ha- twenty minutes. There's a train scene. Mm-hmm. So lots of trains. Lots, lots of, of trains. trains. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. What is your like mental image of the European countryside watching these movies? It's literally trains and sausage factories, and mm-hmm. that's all all that I've all that I come to know now. It's trains and then sausage factories, and potentially, potentially, 
um, a gas station or two that you could maybe get abducted in, but it's debatable. And how, how are you feeling about coming of age movies thus far in the Criterion Collection? I feel like um, I think it really peaked with a Deuce Bigelow. I think that was the best coming of age in the Criterion just because it's like it really shows like not just physical development, but spiritual and emotional as well. If you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, screw you, 400 blows. <laughs> oh, that's got nothing on uh, the the mm-hmm. acting ability of Mr. Rob Schneider. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if you say it did, you know that you're just kill, or kidding yourself, you know? How yeah. m- Remember Billy Liar? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that movie stunk. <laughs> yeah, it stunk. Do you remember Billy Liar? <laughs> Barely. Oh, did but, you think but, it stunk? But but it came to mind watching this, as did Four Hundred Blows, and Rushmore, which is a yeah. great which is a great movie. Yep, I mean, there's been a lot in here. John, like John Criterion, that is, he seems to like Italian films, coming of age films, and that's it. That's pretty much those are the two categories of Criterions, right? Italian and uh, coming of age. And he's fond of horizon lines and samurais. Well, I mean, he's not, he likes the horizon quite a bit, but uh, that came later in the collection. We haven't had too many, like John Ford hasn't been present that much yet. But I mean, horizons do show up in these movies from here and here and there. Yeah. But who really gave us the horizon, Jared? Who indeed, mm-hmm. who, who indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, so back to this movie of young Torless. Oh, so yeah, Tor- what about Tor- it? Tor- Torla shows up, and he's, uh, they-, they stop by, a, like, the pub. They-, they-, okay. they actually don't make it to the school all the way. They kind of divert. Yeah, Torla is, like, he's a, he's a young, young, young fella. He's got mm-hmm. his, every time he sees a, a young woman, he's, he's looking right at her. Mm-hmm. And uh, he kind of hangs out with some boys. They're They're already making fast friends with this lot. Uh, there's this one particular kid. Um, what's his name? R- not rightly. I think it's Pumpkin Escobar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it Anselm? Anson? An- Anselm. Anselm? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't really pay attention to the names. Okay. Well, Anselm. I just watch what they do. An- Anselm is the, we'll call him the victim of, uh, the proceedings of this movie. Uh, oh, he, he, he's, yeah. a, he's a high roller and yeah. uh, he's like, I got money to spend. I'm going to buy it all for my friends. Cause he's spending other people's money that he'll pay back. And uh, there's, there's like the, I don't know, the, the woman running the bar or whatever. She's like, Hey, you want to make a bet on these dice I'm rolling? He's like, yeah, sure. I'll bet 20 bucks. I got it. And then she rolls the dice. Yeah, you lose. And she's like, Oh, well you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Is that uh so I know you're a gambling man, Jerry. Is yeah. that how you gamble usually? No, that would not be how I would gamble. No, you're more of a pachinko man. <laughs> Big time. Big time pachinkoer. Yeah, yeah. That's fine, man. Yeah. Do whatever makes you feel happy. Um. So this this is a problem for Anselm and for um his fellow students. Um, yeah. Who are like, hey, you <laughs> pay us back. Your fuck. Pay us this money. You son of a bitch. Yes. And uh, this basically the whole conflict of this movie boils down to the, the two bullies, I guess, Beinberg and Writing. Um, they mm. are they're, they're going to take liberties with this uh, Bassini kid because yeah. he. I guess, how is it that they catch him stealing? Uh, well, it's not even. It's not even he admits to the stealing. It's that he owes right. debt everywhere. Yes. And then because uh, he it was basically like he's given that ultimatum. He's like, pay me back tonight. Yep. Or you are my slave now. Yep. And uh, he's like, all right. Um, I kind of had a hard time telling some of these like people apart at times because they're, they're all wearing military clothes or kind mm-hmm. of like military style kind of regalia. And these yeah. guys just like. I mean, in black and white, and they're all they're all talking in German to me. Yeah, and um, I was like, "Sure." I'm like, "Which one's Torless?" 
And yeah, because as, as, as the film goes on, for a while. yes, and then as, as the film goes on, it becomes more and more clear. You're like, oh, it's the Jesse Eisenberg slash Michael Sarah looking guy. Yes, which I didn't realize at first for a while either, because yeah. I, I thought it was the guy getting tortured. And I was like, he's got to be young Torless, if not old Torless. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it took me a little bit. And then, yeah. So I think what happens is they don't I don't think they catch him uh, stealing. I think it's like he doesn't have the money and he's like, well, I even tried to steal it from these guys to get it back to you. It's like, that's how much I want to pay you back. And they're like, oh, so you stole. And I think. Right. But I I could be wrong. Yeah, I could be. I'm kind of just reading my notes. I'm like, I don't remember exactly how that came about. Like to me, it's just like, hey, they owe him money and he's not coughing it up. And now he's they can do whatever the fuck they want to him. And then there's some some other trappings of like uh, Torless visiting the the local sex worker Barbara Steele. Mm-hmm. Um, but like uh, this kid, he's 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 above it all. He's an observer, RJ of of life, and he likes to, he's I we all knew we knew this kid in high school, like a cock. Not quite. I mean, not exactly. But he's an <laughs> exhibitionist, right? Tor- or like, Torless? And it, well, well, not Torless, but the other kid seems to be. Which one? The guy who goes to the uh, like the prostitute with him. Because uh, that guy, well, because like I don't know, it's kind of weird, right? Where it's like I'll go and then you go, and then well, yeah, we'll that's what's B- while Beinberg. each other are going. Well, yes, yes. You know, like the homoeroticism. Well, it's like, well, what do you do Arctic. while the other one? Why, what do you do while the other one is there? Do you just like... I don't know, man. You just hang out and eat cheese or... If, if it's on offer, I guess. Well, I mean, he like, he sits down for a little bit, but it doesn't look like he really does anything. He's just kind of yeah. there. He's like, eh. Yeah. Just, it's like, I'll just wait, I guess. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole thing about numbers. <laughs> and and the Taurus mm-hmm. is very upset about these numbers. He's like dividing into negative one and not understanding. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. That, that isn't real. It's like, well, it's, there's imaginary numbers. <laughs> I found that super strange where they're like talking about like these mathematical like things where it's kind of like, uh, uh, I think it's like, you know, like ideal gases and stuff like that. It's like, well, they don't <laughs> of exist. Course. Of course I know about ideal gases. Yeah, you know, ideal gases. It's like, well, they're not real, but if they were real, this is how they would behave. It's like the ideal. It's what everyone wants to be. It's just it's not there, you know, like it's not actually a thing. And then you're like, okay, it's a hard concept to understand Mm -hmm. at first, I think. Yeah. um, From like this earlier part of the movie, uh, I think the only thing that jumps to mind is when one of the classes ends and one of one of the boys that I can't quite recall which one said it is like well there was another memorable day of my life and then the teacher of course is like who said that well you just got you know austrian detention double permanent (laughs) you you have to write out this document because you expressed uh displeasure at how boring school is what a radical concept, but it's not about that. It's, it's about subjugation, RJ. Subjugation? Yeah. My, my, my. So uh, I was like, ah, uh, yeah. So, some things have changed and some things haven't. Man. Anyway. Uh, okay, so, just so moving ahead. Moving right ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh you transition into the, a long sequence of an escalation of Anselm's abuse at the hands of Beinberg, right wing, and watching along Torless um, as like they just start, you know, beating him in this crawl space attic in the school. Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I think it like kind of. Uh, kind of grabbed my attention at one scene where there's a particular set of sounds and you're not seeing what's going on. And, and it's go, like, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this guy getting into Alan Clark scum territory? Uh, Miracle man issue 13 <laughs> territory. I'm not familiar with that. Can you give me the bullet points? Um, well, uh, basically 
Black Adam is stuck in a child's body and goes to a bad, a juvie school and is getting sodomized by bigger bad kids. And like then Black Adam, like Black, DC yeah, Comics? Yeah, but it's like with the serial numbers filed off. Because Miracle Man uh, was a uh, was essentially Shazam, but with what was this published under? What label? Uh, Eclipse. Okay. Uh, and Alan Moore wrote this. And, okay. And, and this is when he speaks the name that he's not supposed to speak because there's the black the Black Adam voice is telling him that I can I can help you, and then he says the name and he explodes the the boy that is sodomizing him, and then he proceeds to tear the rest of them apart because. It's like, oh, this is what a superhuman being could do. And this was groundbreaking stuff in the 80s. The thought exercise of like, what would an angry, psychotic Superman do to a human population? And it would be horrifying. <laughs> Miracle Man issue 15. It's a it's a good time issue. RJ you should check it out. Oh, yeah. You think I would like that, hey? Oh, it's pretty cool. It's got it's, uh, some pretty great sweeping uh, splash pages, double page spreads of uh, destruction. <laughs> Double paged spreads. Yep. Okay. Just, just the way. I will. I'll file it into the queue. Okay. Yeah, you'll put it right there. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get around to it. Is what so, I'm saying. but I'm pretty sure that Alan Moore uh, was probably thinking more along about Alan Clark's Scum, uh, starring old Ray Winstone, which has also got a, a it's got a very explicit, grueling um, sexual assault happened to a uh, you know a bullied kid by horrible bullies and this is sort of the leave it leave it to your imagination is that actually what's happening i would i conclude yes even though it's like oh they've got belts in their hands but then there's the scene where it's like oh they when he goes in when there's the scene where i think uh torless makes uh uh bassini come up there with him and bassini just immediately starts taking his shirt off he's like what are you doing that for Mm-hmm. And then what did you get? What's the implication there, do you think? I don't, I don't know, RJ. It's almost like an Alan Moore comic. It's so do you think like... Alan Moore's okay? Or like... <laughs> I don't know. I haven't, I haven't looked in on him lately. <laughs> I, I, just, I don't mean like in the mo- like at this moment. I just mean in general. Like, do you think Alan Moore is okay? Or like, is he... Does someone need to like talk to him? I, I don't know. I, I think he's okay. Okay. He's, right. he's he's got his uh his drugs and his books. He's good. Okay. Oh, and his magic. Don't forget about the magic. M- magic. He's got lots of magic. Okay. Yeah. So Torless is doing stuff and uh people say, "Hey. All right, Torless." But but now Torless is kind of getting like, "I don't know about this." Cuz he's he's kind of watching the real brutality happening, but he's kind of going along with it. Mm-hmm. And it's starting to escalate because it's like this this kid, he's just taking it. He's just getting mm-hmm. used to it. It's like, oh, we got to up our game. And you're like, huh. If this was a different kind of era of movie making, um, this could go into really, like, really weird, uncomfortable places. But And it doesn't? Well, it's just like 1966 bad. But it's, it seems so safe. <laughs> so yeah. I, I never felt like, Oh God! Oh God! What's going to happen next to this kid? No, that that's reserved for the uh, uh, animal torture and death. <laughs> that's just kind of a uh, sprinkled Offhand. sprinkled into the movie, and you're like, "Who are the real monsters?" <laughs> it's out of nowhere, and it's so unnecessary. Yeah, there's that a... you go. Yeah, White. well, you know, uh, it's a different time. Where you uh, allegedly, where you uh, blow your cod pipe smoke into the mouse and poke at it with like a hot stick, and then your hero comes along to save the mouse. You think, and then he just throws this like mouse right onto the ground or cracking its head against the thing to put it out of its misery. It's like, huh? Yeah, you probably could have just let it go into the grass there, but you know, th- this actually reminded me of the one. Um, horror movie i watched a couple years ago jonathan which like mm-hmm. was like a really interesting movie until it just gets onto some like full-on grotesque uh animal violence and i was like oh dear this is uh doesn't this goes on the the list of movies rj shouldn't watch and who knew and i appreciate who, that's who, good work who, that people who, do. who who would have thought that young torless would have just like 
visited that element like out of nowhere. And of course, yeah. like because movies like this, even when there is that stuff, nobody talks about it at all. It, it's like a blind spot for people. That's what I've been saying, Jared, for years. Everyone's always like, "Well, you know, films are different then," and it's like, should they be? Well, it's not even films; it's culture itself. And culture, and it's like, is it acceptable, yeah. or what? Like, even though they're they're like, "Well, it was acceptable back then," and it's like, was it? It was apparently. There were people yeah. apparently. It's like nobody said anything. You know, I guess no one. Different rules. Different rules for different things. Nobody. I mean, we still we got we have uh, traps all over work for mice. So I mean, well, I mean, I know, uh, like there's there's certain things, but you know, mm. for uh, all for all for film, hey, those art purists out there that tell you it's like a cinema. Cinema is uh, transcended above reality. You know, some you know somebody ma- said that ma- material uh, problems. It's material things are, are beneath us. Hmm, interesting. You know who that is? Nope. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Let's continue. So. Uh, Bassini gets sick of this, or sorry, Bassini's just getting worse and worse off, and there seems to be like a climax building of like, uh, buying, yeah, the bad boys. They're like, hey, once we're done with you, we're going to give you over to the rest of the class, and they're just going to fucking end you. And you're like, oh fuck, here it comes. And uh, okay. Torlis is like, no, I can't let this happen. I feel bad now. And they basically just like shove him a bunch. Mm-hmm. And like it's like, I mean, for the person experiencing this, it would be pretty horrific. But I don't really get that sense watching the movie. I didn't get really like drawn into the intensity of that. It's not like that scene in, say, uh, Thieves Highway where uh, uh, what's his name gets stuck under the truck, and oh, you're and, and you're like, oh, super anxious and like, oh fuck, yeah. like this is horrifying. This movie doesn't accomplish that. Um, where you're like, ooh. I, I mean, for me, it didn't kind of uh, work as well as I think it was hoping to. But I don't know. Maybe I lack empathy because I'm a monster. So mm-hmm. he gets, yes. he basically gets uh, kind of hung upside down and shoved around a bunch. And uh, that that's about it. And then he throws up. Yeah, he, he, he pukes. You think, oh, is he going to accidentally suffocate or something like that? But no, no, nothing really bad happens, like, as far as, like, death, I guess. But, I mean, there's been the, like, psychological torture, um, which is, you know, horrible in its own way. But I feel like it isn't – it didn't uh, connect – uh, on a visceral level for me. And then uh, tor- you think, well, what's the ramifications of all this going to be? And they're like, well, we're with the blame, the victim. I mean, he, he owed money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he got what he deserved. Uh, and then Taurus is like, Hey, you knew, you knew what this is all about. And he's like, yes. And then there's a whole scene where he explains how, why he was going along with this to like all this, like, you know, the, the faculty of the school. And <laughs> it's like, what is up with this T- characters talking out loud? Uh, were, were kids just different back then? Like so, so well spoken. Mm. Like they were uh, being written by uh, professional writers, uh, and expressing themselves no. on the, this philosophical terms about uh, the observance of people and cruelty. I can't imagine what they're talking about. I not. I, I just can't put my finger on what what sort of uh, events in European history um, could, could this be uh, being brought about brought upon by being made been... now so because so the book itself so the confusions of young torless is from 1906 it should be mentioned okay. so the movie came out in 66 and i mean i feel that the i mean it, it kind of is interesting because the movie uh is before you know world war ii which i think would be the throw line that uh, volker mm-hmm. schlondorf is making and in that sense, it's like, oh, I mean, that's, that's smart, I guess, to to make these connections. However, there's like, I feel like this exploration of like kind of like how fascism comes about and cruelty to your fellow man is explored frequently in uh, other things that yeah. I feel are far more, I don't know, impactful for me. 
uh like even like i think of the dos experiment movie uh, yeah from the downfall guy and that like kind of is sort of the same idea like why do people do bad things <laughs> and mm-hmm. this why do they because they're fucking people suck rj i think uh, I, 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 a great man once said once or twice on, on this podcast a great man yes yeah yep. i'd like to meet said person <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so and then the movie kind of ends with Torlos going i'm hitting the road and my mom is going to pick me up <laughs> and, and and that's and that's it do you think his mom does pick him up she does yeah but i mean like she's very happy to have her little boy back i mean like spiritually and oh. emotionally do you think she helps yeah i don't know she's she's part of the problem probably yeah she's caught well, she's coddling this guy well i mean he leaves and then it's like do they resolve anything in the uh education facility it's not a, it wasn't about that Oh, I see. Uh, what did you have any thoughts on the music used in this movie? Fuck, I don't even remember it. So me like... neither. Me neither. But there's like a lot of people mention this, the music in this. And it's even got mm-hmm. its own little entry on Wikipedia, and I was just like, huh. It's um, what is it here? Enhanced by its haunting medieval sounding score, written by Hans Werner Henze. The German modernist composer, Henze, who came of age during the war, was prominent enough in this introspection by virtue of his left political activism in the arts to feel driven to expatriation from Germany. Hans Werner uh, Hanse later arranged a suite from the original score, which was titled Fantasia for Strings. And then I think on Letterboxd, somebody's review mentions, like, it's got a really great score. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, it, it left no impression yeah. at all. Yeah, I I honestly sometimes I'll pick up the scores and especially the Seinfeld type ones. But uh, as soon as you said that, you're like, "What about the music?" I was like, "Did this even have music? I right. don't know." Yeah, like I don't know. You, if you told me that, if you were just like, "Do you remember how there was no score?" I would have been like, <laughs> "Shit, I guess not." God, God damn! Did you damn? Did, when did when did you realize that all the characters were played by the same actor? What? Oh my gosh! Some real classic cinema on that one, then, hey. So tell me what you thought. Uh, in, indifferent. Okay, that's good. I mean, I, I feel like Lost Honor Katharina Bloom was like so good, and I keep like kind of hoping to come back to that. Coup de Gras yeah. was pretty good. Tin Drum uh, was a big. What is this? <laughs> It's so. Yeah. It's uh, that's a, that movie's a, just, a a wild trip. It's but, just and, so and, strange, and, and, and not and not in uh, a good enough way for me. And yeah. Young Torless, though, just it feels like knowing now it's like it was his first film. It's like yeah, it definitely feels that way. This mm-hmm. kind of this kind of has that like knife in the water style of like kind of you know young filmmakers making these movies that they aren't they're not being too heavy handed but they have a, a perspective that i feel is just kind of out of touch like yeah like knife in the water comes to mind for some mm-hmm. reason um very different but if they're also like kind of about um uh, young people kind of finding their place in the world uh even though they it's in that knife in the water that man looks like 40 years old um in this though, it's like, hey, these are like these people all look like high school age at least. That that's a yep. bonus. Um, they do look. The, it's not like Ivy Tidoli, <laughs> where uh, it's like I am twelve, said an eighty year old man. Yeah, it's James Gandolfini as uh, <laughs> as as, a, as, Ang- uh, as Angus as a six uh, grade sixer. Yeah, yeah. James Gandolfini is thirteen. <laughs> he was at one point. <laughs> Well, but, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's all. Play. Remember, remember what it was like when you were thirteen. Anyone can I play don't anything. Want to. Yeah. I'd rather not. But yeah, I, I don't know. This one, it just echoes. It has this vibe that uh, I don't know. It, it was easy enough to watch. Uh, it's that short runtime was appreciated. Mm-hmm. That, that there wasn't like a bonus half hour. Of, of uh, contemplation that added nothing to the conversation of it. Mm-hmm. It's easy enough to watch. It's a very simple story. Yes. But at the same time, I 
feel like there's just maybe better examples of this style of movie that you could go with. And, oh, it, sure. and it's not even like a big, so I'm, like, I'm looking for some coming of age <laughs> action. I'm, I don't care about that, but I, can I recommend a uh, Rob Schneider film? If that's what you're looking for, I would prefer you didn't. Okay. Well, okay. I just, if you ever are looking for a good one, you let me know and I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. No. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm saying is I wish this film tore more. Instead of tore less. Correct. I'd uh, ask you to leave, but uh, where are you going to go? Where am I going to go? Do you know what I mean? Where are you going to go? So what do um, you think of this movie, RJ? Uh, I preferred old tore less, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? Who who plays old Torless? Jack Palance. Okay. <laughs> I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I was not on board with this one very, very much. Um, there was some stuff in there, like the start of the movie. I was like, okay, where is this going? And then by the time we get like halfway through, and it's just like the torturing of a uh, boy. Whatever his name, I'm gonna call him Boy. boy. Torturing of Boy. Ansem. Just say Ansem. A- Ansem. Uh, yeah. So when we get Ansem ha- in there, ha- handsome Ansem. Handsome Ansem. Uh, it really kind of lost my attention, because I was like, oh, is this what it's gonna be? And then it turned out to be that, and I was like, hmm. All right. Uh, I think there's probably some kind of deeper message with the call girl, or not even the call girl, but the like the. Uh, the, like the sex worker lady about how she is in a similar situation, but like a maybe a voluntary one. Whereas Ansem is like, is he in a non-voluntary or is he in a voluntary one as well? Where it's like, like she has a different one where she gets paid for the, for these boys is like entertainment. And then for Ansem, he doesn't get paid for it. Uh, but like in some way, cause he, he has a similar or he has a mentality where he's like, well, they keep telling me that it'll eventually stop. So I'll just keep going until it's done and I'll get through. And then I was like, is there, I was like, is, are they trying to like make some kind of like comparison between the two of them and like jobs and roles that people serve compared to like people who are unwilling in si- certain situations. But I, I'm not going to even begin to try to uh, make that connection, Jared. That's a, a little bit above my pay grade. It's a little uh, highfalutin for what, little we're, bit. For, for what we're doing here. For what we're doing, a little bit. So I was like, I think someone could make that connection. I'm not going to. I, I feel that for me to go that extra mile mm-hmm. and make that, I have to have some sort of uh, urge to do that. And the movie, do, and the movie and doesn't uh, fulfill me with that urge. There's not like this movie where I'm like, holy shit, this movie nails it. Um, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's sort of just like, oh, it, it's the, sub, the subject matter is there and could be worked with, but I don't know if um, the execution of anything in particular is quite there. Ele- elevates the material where you're like, ooh, I want to talk about this. I want to delve into this more mm-hmm. even though it's like these are really interesting things this is yeah. an inter- this this idea of like why why do people do horrible things and why like, mm-hmm. what people just stand around and go along with it why am i just standing around and going along with it i don't feel like there's like even like a thing going on with the movie where like the audience is complicit which oh <laughs> don't you know you know uh i never even looked at the criterion essay to go along with this movie by timothy corrigan but do you what do you think do you think he mentions this do you think this is something that he was uh, uh, down with i'm sure he's making all sorts of connections to okay. things and uh higher higher learning he says let me tell you about this and he uses that voice as well i imagine i imagine but uh, no, I don't know. Uh, you could read that if you want. I don't. But um, I uh, I don't know. I just uh, I didn't get a whole lot out of it. Like when they're torturing a boy, boy Ansem, I was like, okay, whatever. So we're this is uh, like um, what's that movie? Sorority ties or sor- not sorority boys? Uh, school ties with Brendan Fraser and Matt Damon, where it's like. 
they're bugging Brandon Frazier because he's Jewish and that like boarding school. I was like, it's like they're kind of torturing this kid too, but not because he he is something, just because he doesn't have money and he took out bets. So I didn't. There's that, and then like there's the obvious one that they mentioned with Torless, where they're like, they're like, well, you're doing it too, and he's like, no, I'm just talking to him. And they're like, well, yeah, but you live through the pain through him or something. Is he complicit, like the audience? And it's like, uh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I feel like there's no real resolution because at the end, the school keepers are like, well, yeah, this is bad, and we'll take care of it. Uh, but then it's like, you, nothing's gonna happen, you know. Nothing ever happens. Yeah. You know, Jerry, where are the consequences? Yeah. So I in the the essay, um, it's mentioned that Bassini is not coincidentally of Jewish origin. Uh he's the one not he, coincidentally? He, yeah. Yes, he's Jewish. Just Oh, uh, so it is like school ties. <laughs> Where uh, he's being victimized by Austrian men. Well, I, I didn't even know that. I just thought school. So I thought school ties. I see. Seems like my mind is working on a whole other level, though, if mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Interestingly enough. Okay, well, yeah, I don't know. It's it's fine, this, this movie. But like... Well, because, like, uh, see, the movie that I was thinking of, specifically is the uh, white ribbon the michael haneke movie which pretty well does the same thing but it's haneke um so it's like very very well made and like very i don't know smart and analytical as people like to toss out about that movie which is like i remember watching it and being oh that was really good i don't remember anything about it now but it's like this other movie it's like set you know before world war ii Mm-hmm. Which, um, yeah, I think it's like I I would watch that again, and I would not watch Young Torless again. Yeah, I mean, I'm never gonna think of Young Torless again. Next week, if you ask me what I thought of Young Torless, I'll say Young what? <laughs> I'll go what? What are you talking about? Yeah, I'll say who are you talking about? I don't know any Young Torless. Like, get out of here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there are a lot of things you could take out of this movie. You but could. Like, I mean, this movie, like, if you had to write an English paper, you could, um, or a film paper on this, you could uh, pull it apart and say, "Look at this." But mm-hmm. you'd go, "Yes," but maybe you could find another movie to talk about that. I mean, but I guess Young Tauros is ripe because how many people have written about it? Like most people don't even talk about like Volker Schlondorf at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, I mean, I didn't, I saw Death of a Salesman in high school uh, because we read the book and like all his other movies weren't in the conversation. And then when we got to Lost Honor of Katharina Bloom, that was like a big surprise. I was like, whoa, what's this all about? Mm-hmm. And uh, then Coup de Gras, really good. And Tin Drum was tin drum strange and and now and now we got young torless yes we do actually bringing that up uh the opening of young torless reminded me of tin drum tin drum opening as well with the horizon <laughs> and uh tin drum it was potato people and stuff like that but uh oh, yeah. i thought it was a very similar landscape I, I was like i wonder if that's the same place maybe i don't know maybe on the on letterbox it's kind of weird having the two letterbox posters for Leclis and young Toro side by side because they both are black and white and red and they both have black and white people making out um that's yeah that's weird yeah this is a it's been standing out to me all week since i don't watch movies anymore hmm weird have you ever seen all those posters with like Christmas people wearing red sweaters and green sweaters? Yeah, I've seen those. Do you think that's at all similar? <laughs> um, n- no. No? So what are we going to do about this? I don't know. You want to hear about from people who hate this movie? I'll let, I'll let you know. It's like not very like much strong opinions. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that doesn't totally surprise me. So but yeah, let's let's give it a rip. Derek Holmes, one and a half stars. More erotic teens from Schlondorf. 
is it weird that it's not my thing? I mean, I feel like that's the wrong way to approach that. Uh, Derek's bio says, I'm just here to find my son. Stanley, if you're reading this, please follow me or like one of my reviews. I have my notifications on and maybe impress a few people along the way. That's what this person's bio is about. Hmm. Here's some movies I've never heard of uh, as their favorite films. Intruder in the Dust. Starting over from 1979. Silver Lod. Load. From so, 19- hey, Silver Load's good. Oh, what about Whirlpool from 1949? Did you say Silver Lod? I, I mean, I just going off the poster. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, Silver and, and Lod. Whirlpool. I've seen both those movies. And are they favorite film worthy? Well, I think Silver Load's awesome. What about Silver Lod? Is that equally as good? Uh, I'd have to see it. Oh. Hey, they gave Robocop five stars, so it's not all bad news. Uh, but I also see that they gave Return of the Jedi two and a half stars, and their review is uh, ab- abolish jizz. I mean, I'm fine with that. I'll allow that. I will allow that. Curious. I'm a little bit... Yeah, I don't understand the review itself, but I'm not going to say no to it. But... Hol- so. Holm, one and a half stars. I had to watch this since I didn't had time to, enough to read the novel. Not much to say, though. It's based on some prehistoric novel by Muscle. In German, it's called Die Verwergen des Zoglins Torlib. Absolutely Perfect. no reason to get all worked up about. Oh, nearly forgot to mention, best soundtrack ever, which might be facetious. What? might be facetious oh i don't know i don't know about this home i'm not facetious though um they said something weird in their review and i can't remember what it was there's something weird in there but uh i don't know they gave five stars to fight club so tell me what you think Um, tell me what you think jared i don't know (laughs) i don't know uh how about man these are just so underwhelming um patrick ripoli ripple okay. patrick ripple yeah broad the way you think of middle school reading assignments as broad huh? <laughs> not bad even okay. now with my interest in art addressing fascism at an all-time high as you as you okay. as you have i couldn't yeah. i couldn't muster up much enthusiasm here Perhaps there are specifics to the allegory that made this uh, a richer experience in the 1960s Germany than in 2010s America. Barbara Steele as a prostitute, though. C. As in, like, yes, or C, like, you have to see. As in letter C. They gave it a C. Oh. Is that bad? It's not great. I mean, so this person's five star films aren't actually aren't aren't very bad. I'm I'm on board with these. I mean, I I kind of I, I get I actually uh, agree with the sentiment of it. I think this is pretty well what I've been saying. A little bit more. Yep. Th- th- this guy needed like you know thirty seconds of reading to summarize it, and I needed what are we at now? Forty eight minutes. Um, I think to get there. Mm-hmm. But. Well, I mean. What are you gonna do? I mean, the 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 type of movies we need to deal with uh, fascism in America are the Purge movies. Am I right? Well, isn't that what uh, Captain America: Civil War is about? Uh, is that what that was about? That's. I mean, I think people would make that connection as well. Wait, what's the stupid thing they talk about in that movie? So- Sokovia. There's, there's a word in it though. The so- Sokovia Accord. Yeah, I think it is Accords. The Accords? Yeah. Well, the Accords. Yeah. And you go, the what? Yeah. You go, the who? Yeah, it's like we're, we're, we're thinking outside the box. Us Russo brothers. Remember remember when uh, Arrested Development was good? Remember that? Remember when Arrested Development came back? Remember that? Oh, yeah. Hash, uh-uh. Hashtag Accord. Hashtag Tony Stank. Hashtag I don't care. Yeah, you were um, you really lo- loved seeing that in the theater. I did. Jared saw that in the theater, you guys. I did when I watched yep. when I watched movies. Yeah, he saw that one in the theater. He made sure he was gonna go see Tony Stank in the theater, on the big screen. Yeah, Stan Lee was even alive. He's not anymore. Nope. <laughs> oh, 
R.I.P. No, that old man. Rest in power. Rah. No. Uh, anything else from that Rempel fellow? Uh, any, I mean, there any, was any uh, hot shit takes. Favorite films are Shatter Dead from 1994, uh, Woman in the Dunes, uh, Premonitions Following an Evil Deed, which is the uh, David Lynch short, I believe, and then oh, Outer yeah. Space from 1999. Oh yeah, from Peter Chur- uh, Churkaski. Yep. Yeah. I mean, which is a short. It looks like. I know those. I know those movies. I've heard of those. I've yeah. watched no, them. This person's taste isn't bad. Very they, good. Uh, their five star films are. Uh, I'm on board with these. Yeah. What so. about what about those negatives? Uh, there wasn't a whole lot there to be honest. So in the one star, ooh, the Irishman half a star. Ooh. <laughs> so like, I mean, I don't think the Irishman is very good either. But a half a star is like mm, the Ninth Gate a half a star as well. I know you're a big Ninth Gate man. Mm-hmm. Uh, one star films include, um, fuck, what, what is any of this shit? Stuff I don't know what it is. But she's all that is all. He also gave one star. Secret Honor one star. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what that's about, but okay. God damn. Some we- there are some weird ones in here, but oh well, that's fine. Driving Miss Daisy one star. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I just don't know. Um, so any fi- any final thoughts here on Young Torless before we uh, tuck it into bed? I prefer my Torless a little bit more mature. Mm-hmm. That's what I would yeah, say. Yeah, a l- little bit more ripe. Just a little bit. Not this, too ripe. Put, put, maybe put this one back in the oven. It's not done. Uh yeah, I would. Uh, I'd hit it up. At, I'd hit it to broil for a little bit. It needs. Yeah. You gotta. You gotta crisp, do something. Yeah, crisp this lasagna. Yeah, just a little bit higher. Yeah, no, everyone. Every, every, everybody loves burnt cheese. Burnt cheese. No, that's a good point. Damn right. That's a good point. After the break, um, our moms come to pick us up, and everything will be just fine. We don't, have to, we, don't have to worry, we don't have to worry about it anymore. It's not our problem. 